it is a curious thing. Hundreds of young Bahamians will line up with huge drums on their shoulders. Those drums pound right into your soul. And there will be whistles blow. And the cow bells will fall in line. And there will be what we call black horns. And these people who seemingly are just ordinary citizens come together to create this magnificent cultural expression of who they really are. you've heard everything, but the world is full of surprises. And when you're hanging out with musicians, nothing is off limits. Is this what you guys do every weekend? Every night. <laughs> every night. <laughs> my name is Jacob Edgar. Music is my life, and life is short. So crank up the volume and let the voyage begin. Sun, sea, sand, it's a tropical paradise. But those are a dime a dozen. I'm looking for places that also have incredible culture. And on this episode of Music Voyager, we're gonna be diving into the rhythms of Junkanoo, Rake and Scrape, Goombe. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Look out, Bahamas, here we come. Get ready to wait. The Bahamas deserves its reputation as a tropical playground. And for most visitors, that's enough. They just want a relaxing getaway where they can unwind and lounge by the beach. It could be anywhere as far as they're concerned, as long as the sun is shining. Music Voyager. That was close, it was a good try. But if you want to get to know the real Bahamas, you need to look beyond the beach hotels and cruise ship ports. You need to get out onto the streets and meet some people. You will quickly learn they are as warm and welcoming as the weather. And they definitely dance to the beat of their own drum. I see Jacob, he got the junkanoo, junkanoo. Music is everywhere, but you'll hear plenty that's not authentic to the Bahamas, like reggae steel drums, soca, and hotel bands playing Jimmy Buffett covers. The exception is during Junkanoo season. This is when the country explodes in a celebration of local culture. Junkanoo happens two days of the year, on Boxing Day, that's the day after Christmas, and again on New Year's morning. And the biggest event is in Nassau. I've come to the Bahamas to experience Junkanoo for myself and dig into what this celebration is all about. On the surface, Junkanoo looks a lot like Carnival in Trinidad in Brazil or Mardi Gras in New Orleans. So what makes Junkanoo different? Is it just a big show for tourists or is there something deeper going on? When I was a little girl, I was enthralled by Junkanoo. Like many Bahamians, Arlene Nash Ferguson was captivated by Junkanoo at a very young age. I just thought that it was truly magical 
that after all of the beauty and drama of Christmas, just when you thought life couldn't get any better as a child, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the street, people are dancing. It was just a magical thing that gripped me and it has held me in its enthrall ever since. Arlene is so passionate about Junkanoo, she even turned her childhood home in Nassau into a Junkanoo museum. Hello, Hello, you must be Arlene. And you must be Jacob. What nice a to pleasure meet to meet you. Welcome to the wow, Bahamas and to Junkanoo beautiful. and to Educulture. So what do we have in here? What is all of this? These are costumes, Junkanoo costumes that have been on various parades and they are on display for our school children and for our visitors to see the kind of artistry that is involved up close in Junkanoo. This is what I look like in one of my costumes. That's you in that That's picture. That's me. <laughs> yes, right. It's quite a drama. Yeah. Now, what does the word Junkanoo mean? There are many theories and I believe the real reason will be lost in antiquity. I do know that my mother all called it the Johnny Canoes. When I was a little girl, it was known as John Canoe. Right. And in the Bahamas, that contracted to John Canoe. But the name isn't the only difference between John Canoe and Carnival. Not only does John Canoe take place at a different time of the year, it has no connection to the European Catholic festivals from which Carnival was born. Both Carnival and Junkanoo, however, have been practiced in the Caribbean since the slavery era, and they both reflect oppressed people's desire for freedom of expression. So please come right with me. We're walking back into the past. This used to be the kitchen. So let me introduce you first. I tell the children, this is Sponge Bahama. How many Bob. children do you think have nightmares about this particular creature? <laughs> Sponge This Bahama is like a Bob. horror movie right here. <laughs> Nobody has cried yet. <laughs> but you know, in the old days, when you look at the photographs on the wall, they actually are quite scary. And Junkanoo did not begin to be beautiful until into the 1950s. Junkanoo started as a form of passive resistance to slavery. It was a proud people saying, we survived. Let us celebrate, let us recreate our festivals from home. Bahamian history and culture can't be fully appreciated without recognizing the enduring impact of slavery. And one place to start is the Pompeii Museum of Slavery and Emancipation, right in downtown Nassau. On the slave ship they came, in shackles and chains. As with the rest of the Caribbean, the majority of the population of the Bahamas has African ancestry. Many of their forefathers were brought directly to the islands from West Africa. Others came from America to work on plantations established by outcast British loyalists. But slavery ended 35 years earlier in the Bahamas than it did in the U.S., and the Bahamas became a refuge for escaped slaves from the Americas, as well as for Africans rescued from ships captured by the British, creating multiple layers of African influence. This is the ruin of the Devo plantation. And there were over 500 slaves that worked around this property back in the day. You know, slavery seems like something that happened so long ago, but when you come to a place like this and see this physical representation of the history of slavery, it's a reminder of how much impact it still has and how much its presence is still felt. Slavery sparked the Junkanoo fire, and the flame of African culture is what makes Bahamian music burn brightly to this day. Spiritual and gospel music is omnipresent in the Bahamas. In this Baptist church on Cat Island, you can still find African retentions in the tradition of rushing, in which churchgoers rise from their seats and sing call and response hymns for hours. On the morning of December 26th and New Year's Day, rushing would continue on all night and into the morning as people made their way from the church to the streets for junking. Remember when I said music is everywhere in the Bahamas? Well, as it turns out, the security guard at the Slavery Museum is in a band. They're called Tropical Depression, 
and they perform authentic rake and scrape music. He offers to get his band together that night for a demonstration. <laughs> we, can sound like, we sound like a rock group. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want no hurricane. We don't want no storm. All we need is a little cool breeze. Call me a little breeze. <laughs> <laughs> a little tropical breeze. The guy coming off the scene now. Ask any Bahamian, what is real Bahamian music? And they will certainly say, rake and scrape. With roots in the outer islands where African culture was particularly strong, rake and scrape blends the rhythms of a goombe drum, or in the case of this band, a number two wash tub, a melodic instrument such as an accordion or harmonica, and the sashaying scratching of a handsaw whose serrated edge is rubbed with a screwdriver. Who says you need fancy instruments to make music? If you've got the rhythm in your soul, a rusty saw, a dented wash bucket, and a dime store harmonica will suffice. As with Junkanoo, Rake and Scrape demonstrates the ingenuity of people who just needed to express themselves through music and dance, and they would slap, scratch, blow, or pluck whatever they had available that got their feet moving. Rake and scrape, where does the name come from? A lot of people think it comes from the saw, because she rakes the saw. But I think it's whatever you rake and scraped up to make some music, <laughs> that's rake and scrape. And that's what you yeah, guys have rake done. And ah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One thirty in the morning in downtown Nassau on New Year's morning and Junkanoo is just getting started. All the groups are starting to set up their floats and in just a few minutes this whole downtown area is going to be exploding with color and music and life and it's going to be a long, long night. The lead up to Junkanoo gets pretty chaotic with people running around, getting everything ready for the madness to come. Luckily, I have a local to keep me from getting lost. I wanna live and Julian Belize is a popular young singer who's looking to create fresh sounds that will appeal to a young generation. So Julian Belize, <laughs> uh, tell me about yourself a little bit. The sound is like a pop, Caribbean flavored, meshed all up in one with some Junkanoo, which is like our native sound. While Julian is clearly striving to create an international hit, with a nod to Junkanoo rhythms, dances, and costumes on the video to his latest song, Live and Wine, he's trying to build mainstream success on a Bahamian foundation. Dance with somebody, just wine. Junkanoo Nights. Yes, I mean, it is. I am. I'm not wearing this funny hat for nothing. <laughs> so describe where we are and what's going on. All right, we're on Bay Street. Okay, this is this is the whole area where it goes down. In a few minutes, you're gonna see this whole thing transform to costumes, Bahamians, just up and down the streets, getting ready to parade and celebrate our culture. But I might as well tell you, man, it's a huge competition between a lot of the groups. Yeah. And this is like. This is like nothing you've seen, man. This is like so it's like seen. a sporting event. Like people Certainly. have their teams, they the ones Certainly. that they have allegiances to, Certainly. and there's arguments between Certainly. them. Porters follow the various Junkanoo groups as passionately as sports fans, and they take it just as seriously. Junkanoo is a competition. Teams are judged on best costumes, choreography, music, and more. Saxon! Now let me ask you, Ryan, what does something like this cost? Roughly between uh, 
three to four thousand dollars. Three to four thousand dollars. Yeah. Is there like a prize for this particular costume or for like? Yeah, they, they, it's a cash price. I'm not sure of the price for the, for, for for New Year's, but for boxing day, the price is about uh, two thousand dollars. Oh, nice. So sometimes you get your money back, but. And you guys it's not about the money, right? No, it's, it's about, about the, the love, pride. heritage, love and, and heritage. Right. Groups prepare for this night for months, building their elaborate costumes and floats at Junkanoo shacks, workshops where they transform simple paper, cardboard, and wire into phantasmagorical displays. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Nice Jacob. to meet you. Welcome, welcome to Colors Entertainment and Junk Food Organization. This is our little village here. All right. So what's going on here? What are people right doing? Right now we're we're hustling. Yeah, around. we're we're hustling trying to get our New Year's Day program to go and win parade number ten. Okay. All right. How did you do at the Boxing Day? You came first. So we we really? we, we have we have nine consecutive parades yeah. in our division right now. Colors is one of the most respected groups in the B division, the smaller ensembles of less than 200 people. The A division can include groups with more than a thousand participants. Each group picks a theme and builds a parade around that theme. Colors focuses on themes that celebrate Bahamian folklore. And this year, as is the case almost every year, they are the group to beat in their division. So let's look at this costume here. Junkanoo costumes and floats are all made by hand out of very basic materials. After constructing a frame from wire and hollow rods, cardboard and paper are bent into shape and marked by a designer to indicate colors and patterns. Miles of brightly colored paper strips are individually cut to form the fringe that is then applied to the costume with brush and glue. After weeks, sometimes months of work, the final result is truly impressive. Junkanoo rules require strict adherence to time-worn techniques. For example, all Junkanoo floats must be moved with people power. No engines allowed. Over here, there's a, there's a tune called Miss Lucy, Hang Herself in the Mango Tree. That's a, that sounds like a lovely children's song. Well, it's, it's not a lovely children's song. It's not a pretty one. <laughs> but, but you know something? The costume is pretty, though. What you do is turn around, reverse in there like a nice car, and, and scoot down a little bit. Okay, go, yes, and then back up and come straight up. There you go. Oh, I knew I should have gone on that and, diet. And, and stand up. Whoa. There you go. How does it feel? Does it feel heavy? It feels, no, it doesn't feel heavy at all. Good. And we will hook you up. <laughs> Lovely. Another way Junkanoo adheres to tradition is with the use of real instruments. I was recently at Carnival in Trinidad, where most of the parade music is pre-recorded. In the Bahamas, only live music is allowed, which gives young people like these an opportunity to improve their musical skills. The shack is like a social club that provides young people with a positive activity that builds community. Plus, it's a great excuse to get together and just make some noise. And I can get down with that. Like me. What kind of food would you find during Junkanoo? What's the oh, some guava duff? You gotta get you guava some guava duff. What's guava duff? Guava duff is like okay, so the guava fruit. Okay, yeah, I know. We take the guava fruit, we cut it up, and then we we create this dough, mix it all together, put it in a plastic bag, and then okay. boil it in hot water. Ooh. By the time it comes out, it's nice and fluffy, hard, and you slice it, and then you make a sauce with it. It's the perfect dessert. You know what? I, I, I want to try that now. You know what? After you have this, you're not going to leave the Bahamas. All right. You're going to stay. Mm. Officially a Bahamian. Yeah, you're right. Cancel my flight. 
I'm staying. <laughs> I'm staying here. All right, now, Jake, let me tell you what's happening here. This is colors. Colors, we know colors. these guys. We're at yes. the track. Yes. You're gonna, it's going to sound so cool when you see them put it all together. So, now, this is my favorite part, the drums, because the drums are the heartbeat of jungle music. Now, you know a garbage tin, right? Like the big garbage tin? Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do, right, we'll take out the bottom, and then what we'll do, we'll stretch the goat skin. OK. And put it over the... Over the tin. Right? Yes. Yeah. And when we heat it up, it creates this unique sound. And is that what this fire is over here? Yeah. All right, let's go check this out. This is like, any musician, this is the best part because you actually watch a drum come to life. Oh, we got some guys coming. Up until this moment, I've only heard bits and pieces of the Junkanoo sound, but here, around the fire, I get my first taste of how magical live Junkanoo music can be. I can clearly hear the African roots in the interplay of cowbell, whistle, horns, and drums. It's entrancing, and the pulse is impossible to resist. One of the most respected and cherished Bahamian drummers is John Chipman, affectionately known as Chippy. 86 years old, Chipman is considered the godfather of Junkanoo drumming. He's been beating the drum for Junkanoo since he was just a child, and he's still going strong. I stop by his house to pay Chipman a visit. Oh, here's somebody. Hello. Hello. Uh, Welcome, you must boys. be Mr. Chipman. I uh, one and only, and no be another. <laughs> I have traveled around the world beating this drum. I'm, I was beating this drum for 65 years. You name the country, Italy, Spain, England, France, Korea, New Zealand, Italy. Yeah. Chipman is a true character. His personality as colorful as his wardrobe. He loves to teach Junkanoo rhythms, imparting his long lifetime of drumming wisdom to a new generation. Although with all the noise I'm making, I'm glad I'm not his neighbor. For Chipman, the drum is a humble instrument that can sound great when played by one person. But as the Junkanoo parade finally begins, I quickly learned the true power of the drum is revealed when people join together in a communal beat. Contrary to what I feared before I came to the Bahamas, it's clear Junkanoo is not just a tourist attraction. It's a sincere celebration of Bahamian heritage, a family-friendly opportunity to honor the country's unique identity, not just party like there's no tomorrow. Junkanoo allows Bahamians to be themselves. Even if that's just twice a year. To use paper to make floats, buckets to make drums, to take simple materials to construct a magical world of stories, myths, and memories. My host and guide, Julian, is evidence that the rhythms of the past are being recycled by a whole new generation of Bahamians. Based on my experience in the Bahamas so far, the future of Junkanoo and Bahamian music looks bright. And what music it is, filled with passion, joy, and soul. It's music that demands your attention. The infectious rhythms of Junkanoo have inspired me to seek out what other music the Bahamas has to offer. But first, I think I need to get a little sleep. Yeah.